After all the people who weren't in the class had left, the woman introduced herself. My name is Ha Yun Firestorm, and I'll be your teacher for this year. I am an A rank Fireblade Master and have been an adventurer for the past decade. You have the honor of being taught by one of the youngest Blade Masters on this continent. If you follow what I have to teach, you will learn the necessary skills to survive in this chaotic world. Looking around at the students, she said, I want each of you to introduce yourself and tell a brief history of yourself. Afterward, we will be going on a short trip outside the city. After finishing her introductions and itinerary for the day, she pointed at the boy sitting in the front row. The boy stood up and looking a little nervous said, My name is Fred Sallyworth and I come from the village of Creed. Both of my parents are farmers, so I hope to grow strong and help them. After seeing the teacher nod her head, Fred sat back down. Several of the students began to introduce themselves and give a brief history of them and their family. There were several students that were from minor nobility and talked about how powerful they were compared to people in their own family. Smug and arrogant would be an understatement when describing how they acted. Seeing the expression on the teacher's face, it could be seen that she was annoyed at how pompous they acted. Though there were several from noble families, many of the students came from different villages and towns. Some came from merchant families, while others were crafting families. An older looking boy with several pretty servants sitting next to him stood up and stated, I am Eric Lightwing IV, second prince of the Great Lunar Empire. I am already an upper sea rank knight and will soon lead the armies of the Empire to a prosperous future under my older brother's command, the Crown Prince. Though my skills are above those required for this class, I was informed that all students at this academy was required to attend this class. The only thing I ask from all of you is to not stand in my way, he smirked at the teacher. The teacher turned her face slightly away from him, with a slight frown on her lips. Han was curious about what their connection to one another was, or if this was related to him being a prince. It wouldn't be unusual for a prince to receive preferential treatment, even in a place that acted as if it was neutral. After the prince had made his speech, the class seemed to have a tense air about it. There were some of the minor nobility in the kingdom who looked at the prince with scorn. Others, especially the students from villages and town, tried to make themselves not stand out. Even though they may be safe within the city, there is no telling what someone with his level of power could do if offended. A girl who was an elf stood up and said, I am Elevonia, Nightborn, fourth princess of the Elven Kingdom. My rank is lower B rank, and I am trained as a shadow dancer and mage. To improve relations with non-elven nations, I volunteered to come to this academy. I hope that we can all get along and learn from one another. She bowed when she finished, giving the class a peaceful feeling. Compared to the prince, the princess seemed like someone who was genuine and compassionate. Many of the boys in the room were blushing, while the girls were looking at her with admiration. The teacher, recovering, gave her a warm smile and nodded her head. After the princess had introduced herself, the rest of the students were common folks who earned the ability to attend the academy. For those who were not nobility, the average rank seemed to be an, an upper D rank. This was understandable, considering the resources they would have at their disposal before arriving here. It was already impressive that they were at that high of a rank. When it came to Khan's turn, all his classmates looked at him. He stood up and casually said, I am Han Yi. You may call me Yi. I am the son of a humble magician and have been studying inside of my family's property. I look forward to getting to know all of you and become close friends. Considering the color of his uniform, 
Han didn't believe it was necessary to state his rank. Though the color of his uniform wouldn't announce his level with an S rank, considering how he was several ranks above his classmates, it would be meaningless. After he finished talking, the class just stared at him in silence. The teacher stood silent like the rest of the class, looking at his uniform. After several moments had passed, the teacher realized that she was staring and focused her attention on the class. Now that we have introduced ourselves, we will begin the lesson for the day. Considering this class is about getting a sense of the world, we will be mainly having this class outside the city. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the outside world, there are many dangerous things out there. You will need to be cautious against monsters, demons, bandits, and the environment. We will be meeting at the city's entrance, so make sure that you get the necessary materials for this excursion. Make sure that you are all at the entrance in an hour. After telling the class this, she headed for the door and left them to get ready. Han stood up and walked out of the classroom and out of the building. He didn't expect the class to start the practical portion so soon, so it would be interesting seeing how the people in this world behaved in the wilderness. Considering he only had an hour, he decided to head straight towards the meeting location. There wasn't anything that he needed to prepare ahead of time, so there was no need to visit the various stores. Passing him by, many of his classmates were rushing to the stores to buy their supplies. Reaching the entrance, it wasn't as busy as when he first arrived. The sea of tents were no longer in front of the entrance, so he could enjoy the peaceful view. Off in the distance, Han could see a forest that was thicker than any he had seen on Earth. He wondered if they were going to explore the forest for their first lesson. As he waited, Han watched the guards check each of the wagons that were waiting to enter into the city. The guards were very thorough at their jobs, but several of them would surround the wagon and carefully remove each item. Once the wagon was emptied, they would check for any secret compartments. Judging by the wagon owner's face, this was something that occurred on a regular basis. So it lacked the usual signs of frustrations in a modern airport. Seeing the number of wagons that were waiting, this method didn't seem to cause significant issues. Feeling a little bored, Han casually opened up a menu and glanced at the items in each of the wagons. On the display, it showed a list of details about the object. It said, Object, Wagon, Small, Owner's Job, Merchant, Origin, Town of Solanus, Helios Kingdom, Destination, Illumin, Academic City, Cargo, Food Ingredients, Hidden Objects, None. Looking at the menu, Han saw that there wasn't anything suspicious in the wagon. This was the same conclusion that the guards reached and allowed the wagon to continue into the city. The average time for each wagon seemed to be about 15 minutes, so this was a good way to wait until everyone else arrived. On the third vehicle waiting to be expected, there was a man that appeared with a very large wagon. As the guards instructed the man to separate from his wagon, the man gave a large smile and complied with their order. Compared to the other wagons, this one had a canopy over it and indicated that the man was someone that traveled a lot to sell his wares. The guards began to remove the items inside of the wagon to, and check each item. Since there were more items, the guards went through the checking procedure faster to not keep the line of other wagons waiting. This was similar to how trucks on Earth were required to stop at various checkpoints when they are driving on the highway. If the authorities took too long, there would be a long line of trucks waiting to be processed. Though the guards couldn't check everything, they could take a large enough sample and hopefully spot anything that didn't belong. Looking at the screen, Han saw that everything else was pretty much the same as the previous wagons except for one. In the hidden objects category, it was listed 
pleasure bottles, a hundred controlled substance. And in the item detail, a description was laid out. A substance that is used to increase a person's sensitivity to external stimuli, increases the subject's desire for sexual activity. Liquid is poured into drinks and used primarily in the sex industry. When the notice of the existence of a hidden object came up, Han was surprised and elated. He didn't think that there would be anything being smuggled in during the short time he was waiting for his class to arrive. Not only was there a substance being smuggled in, but this man was also a spy. Using a finger to draw out a square, Han captured the image of the man. Bringing up the image on a separate screen, he sent over the queen. Queen, I just sent you an image. I want you to gather information on him and find out who his customers are. Pay particular attention to a drug called Pleasure. He contacted the queen. Yes, master. I will assign people to find him and gather all relevant information. I will not fail you. Queen answered. He did have thoughts to send a message to the guards and let them know about the smuggled items, but Han was curious as to where this would lead him. This event also confirmed his thoughts about there being an underground economy within the city. Obviously, the guards wouldn't be able to find everything, so there must be items that bypass the level of security around this place. You have arrived here early, a voice said to him, while he was deep in thought. Han looked over and saw that it was Hai Yun, his teacher. Looking her up and down, Han saw that she changed into a more form-fitting outfit, looking like a real adventurer. Yes, teacher. I did not have much that I needed to prepare, so I came here early and have begun mentally preparing myself. He casually told her. Hyun's face scrunched up after hearing how easygoing he was being. Just because your uniform may say that you're an s rank individual, do not underestimate the world. There have been many strong individuals who believe that they had nothing to worry about and ended up losing their lives. She lectured him. Bowing his head, Hyun responded, Teacher, I did not mean to come off as overconfident. I hope I did not offend you with my cavalier attitude. Even though this teacher was nowhere near his power level, he didn't want to offend someone he had just met. Her response let him know that she cared for her students, which was never a negative thing. It was always better to be with someone that showed concern instead of apathy. This woman, is she a student or your servant? Hyun asked him, looking at Brittany. Brittany, we are being rude. Introduce yourself to the esteemed teacher, Han ordered Brittany. Giving Hyun a courtesy, Brittany said, Please forgive my rudeness to my master's teacher. I am called Brittany and I am master's personal attendant. Grunting, Hyun looked Brittany up and down, gauging her abilities. Will your attendant be able to follow where we will be going? She asked with concern. Do not worry about Brittany. She is more than capable of handling anything that may come up. He smiled, thinking about all the modifications he made to her. Considering what this world considered to be S-ranked, Han had modified her to be at the level of a triple S-ranked adventurer. She may not win against Helania, but her magical and physical abilities are close to Helania and Queen. With making her stats all nearly as powerful as Helania and Queen, he also gave her several abilities. These abilities were the ability to make a set of armor appear covering the user in a protective suit of armor. Considering Brittany was classified as a paladin and a believer of Han, 
she would gain a percentage of his abilities. She was also able to create any type of weapon using the user's imagination. And this power was connected to Han's creation ability. He also gave her time magic, fire magic, summoning magic, heal magic, and made her a combat expert. Han figured that all these modifications would be unnecessary and overkill, but he wanted to see Brittany in action. Making her into a paladin was something he thought was interesting. It would be as if he was God and she was his believer. The armor was made to look rather sinister, which was funny due to how innocent Brittany looked. When Han had shown her what her armor looked like, Brittany had shed tears of joy. Though she was only a personal attendant, Han didn't realize that her inability to contribute in her fight had weighed heavily on her. With her current status, she wouldn't have to worry about getting into a fight. He even made it so that she could tap into his power, which even the other floor protectors couldn't do. She couldn't do the same things he could, but would help her making various equipment and creatures appear if she needed them. Hai Yun gave Han a look that indicated her doubts on the matter, but since she was a servant of, of Han, Hai Yun didn't want to step where she had no right. Hai Yun looked over at the wagon that was being searched and gave an odd look. When Han noticed the look in his teacher's eyes, it reminded him of someone that felt shame and excitement. Not caring much about this look, he just continued to stand and watch the wagons going by after they were inspected. Teacher, where will we be going once the rest of the class shows up? Han asked her, curious about whether his theory about the forest was correct. We'll be going into the forest over there, Hai Yun pointed at the large forest in view. Inside the forest, we'll find many monsters for you and the rest of the class to see. Deep inside the forest, we'll be visiting a structure and go explore inside of it. It is a popular location for those starting off as an adventurer, so it will provide everyone with good experience, his teacher explained. How long will this excursion be? Han wondered. We will be exploring for several days, so this is why I gave everyone time to gather the necessary equipment. When Han asked her, Hai Yun appeared annoyed, guessing that Han didn't bring equipment for this. The documents on your class information sheet should have provided you with the details of this class. Each week, we will be traveling for several days so that each student will gain the required practical knowledge. If you need to, I can have everyone wait while you go and gather the necessary equipment for spending nights outside. She sighed heavily, not liking the idea of holding everyone else up for one unprepared student. There will be no need, teacher. I am ready for any scenario. Han replied in a confident voice. Where's your equipment then? Hai Yun accused. I have it all stored, he replied with sweeping his hand and making a large tent appear on the grassy area, a hundred feet away from them. Everyone around him jumped when they noticed a large tent suddenly appear out of nowhere. Hai Yun sharply turned to look at him, exclaiming, did you make that appear? Yes, Han said, feeling a little confused. He knew that spatial magic existed in this world, and how they even had rings to store items. So he didn't understand why his teacher looked so shocked. This should be a minor thing, but the way everyone was acting, Han must have performed a great feat. Where did you make that appear from? She asked him with urgency. I pulled it from my spatial dimension, like anyone else, he lied. Hai Yun grabbed him by his collar and stared into his eyes, saying, Do not lie to me, boy. Where did that come from? No person is able to pull out such a large object from the spatial dimension. Han mentally slapped his forehead, realizing what the issue was. 
Based on how his teacher was acting, most people had a small spatial dimension, so bringing out an entire setup tent was nearly impossible. He quickly tried to think about how to explain this when he saw a bright flash next to him. Changing into her paladin armor, Brittany materialized a basta sword and pointed it at Hai Yun. The pressure of her killing tent was so great that those around her were on their hands and knees trying to fight against the sudden pressure. Even the guards were affected by her power, with most only able to stay on one knee and resist the pressure. Likely due to her high rank, Hai Yun was able to keep standing, but beads of sweat covered her forehead. The hand that was grabbing Han's collar was shaking as his teacher realized her error. One of her hands was reaching for her sword at her side, but stopped when the force pressing down on her was tripled. While this drove Hai Yun to be on her hands and knees, everyone else was plastered to the ground and looked to be in pain.